Yeah, we spend about $1.8 trillion a year on tax breaks. Um, and that's double what we spend on the military. And most of that money is accrued by the top 20% of Americans. And I think it is understandable why many Americans don't see a tax break as a government program. But a tax break and a welfare check gives people money. A tax break and a welfare check costs the government something. So instead of getting the mortgage interest deduction, like the state could just mail you a check every year. It's the same. And so I think that um, we have to recognize that. And we have, to, I think it's incredibly important that we start cultivating a language where anytime someone says, well, how can we afford it? We can't afford that. It's just, we make that so uncool and so stupid sounding that uh, people can't say it anymore. We have to at least admit that this is the way we want to organize our civilization, you know, and stop repeating this lie of scarcity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, another suggestion of yours was uh, this whole issue of uh, uh, the banks charging you money when you uh, are in the red on yeah. your account, overdraft fees, yep. and extraordinarily high uh, fines for uh, not paying your credit card on time. You say they pull 61 million a day out of the pocket of the poor in these overdraft fees. And of those fees, uh, only 9% of the people with the accounts pay 84% of those fees. So we know who's suffering right. from this. Would it be possible for government to forbid banks to do this? Yeah, other countries do. So Israel does, for example. You cannot overcharge people these exorbitant fees. and so. This is something that other countries clearly regulate. You can clearly regulate this. Banks don't have to do this. It's just incredibly profitable. And it's profitable for us, too, because we now have free checking accounts. But it turns out those accounts aren't free. There's no free lunch. There's no free lunch.